I would like to show you all about apple pressing. Here we have all the equipment that you could possibly need, but before we start, I'd like to run through a few safety features. There are three key elements that we need to focus on. The first is protective clothing. The second aspect is working with water and electricity. The third aspect is sensible hygiene practices. Protective clothing is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, apple juice can stain clothing. Working with water, you're bound to get wet. The hose is constantly running. So I would recommend you at least have waterproof boots, rubber gloves, and if possible, a waterproof apron. Throughout the apple season, the temperature drops and you'll often find yourselves working into the evening. It gets cold. Make sure you've got ample warm clothing as well with you. In the second part, we'll be using water and electricity. We're using water for washing the fruit and cleaning the equipment and electricity because that operates the machinery. As we know, the two don't mix. So we're going to try and keep them as far apart as possible and we will always be using a circuit breaker. The third aspect we need to discuss is food hygiene. Ultimately, we'll be preparing something that people will be drinking. So we need to take on board some basic principles. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure the equipment being used is clean and that you're using a clean water supply. Throughout this film, we'll be highlighting in more detail some of the other aspects that you should take on board. When you're setting up, make sure you've got plenty of space. The process will involve washing the apples, milling the apples and pressing the apples. If you get the right flow, it will make it more efficient, safer and a lot more fun for people wanting to help. Boxes of apples are very heavy and so are buckets of water. If you have to lift them, use a, back, a straight back and bend your knees, but much better, get help. You can use either cooking or eating apples, as long as they are fully ripe. They are ripe if they can be easily shaken from the tree or have brown pips. A mixture of different varieties will make juice with a good balance of sweetness and sharpness. It doesn't matter how spotty or cracked the skins are, as long as the flesh is clean, they'll be fine. Before you start, calculate how many containers you need for the juice. 10 kilos of apples will produce up to 6 litres of juice. Washing and rinsing the apples is essential to remove dirt. It also gives you an opportunity to inspect fruit that's been in storage. Bruised apples are quite okay. You can see these apples aren't good enough for the fruit bowl, but they'll make lovely juice. But if they are rotten, like this one, take it out. The mill is meant to be transported with the yellow funnel in place. This isn't always possible, so you will need to take off the plastic bucket which has been taped on to protect you from the blades. Either the yellow funnel or this bucket must be in place before you lift or shift the base. Remove the small piece of blue tack which is used to stop water getting into the motor during cleaning. Attach the funnel by locating the bolt into the hole. Secure it with the three clasps. Check the mill is stable and level. Connect it to the electricity supply. Fully unwind the extension lead, but make sure people won't trip over it. Plug in the circuit breaker and connect the mill. Test the circuit breaker and then switch on the mill. 
you must start the mill before you start adding apples. And don't forget to position a bucket to catch the pulp. You don't need to chop up the apples, but put them down in a steady flow or it will block the pipe. When all the apples have gone through the mill, switch off the machine. The apple pulp is called pomace and you are now ready to start pressing. Now the magic begins. A key element that you must look after is the turning pin, which is kept in the string bag. Without it, the whole operation fails. One level teaspoon of vitamin C powder in 10 litres of juice will keep it nice and golden and stop it discolouring. The sequence you'll need is to place the frame, then the cloth, then the pomace and finally the grid. Spread the pomace into the cloth. Make it nice and level and push it evenly into the corners. Fold the cloth over Remove the frame, position the grid, and you're ready to start another layer. These layers together are called the cheese. As you build up the layers, make sure it's not leaning over. Make sure it's nice and level. Place the large wooden block on top of the last grid and apply pressure by winding the handle. It, it locks, but then the ratchet effect... When you feel some resistance, use the ratchet mechanism to squeeze like out the last bit of juice. Back and continue to push. Stop winding the handle when it feels tight. When the juice has slowed down to a trickle, unwind the handle and start dismantling the cheese. The spent pomace is acidic and nearly impossible to compost on a domestic heap. The best solution is to put it into strong sacks and take it to a waste recycling depot where it can be reprocessed properly. A table is handy for filling containers. The apple juice is acidic, so you must use for containers that are food grade, that is plastic or glass. Apple juice will corrode steel and dissolve the glaze on pottery, so avoid these at all costs. Disconnect the electricity supply. Cover the electrics with a bag. sure the blue tack is in place. Then it is safe to start scrubbing down the blades. Replace the bucket and secure it with the tape supplied.
Having prepared your juice, the problem now is actually what to do with it, how to make it last. So I would recommend uh, pasteurisation. Very often, freezing is a good method of preserving your juice. But if your freezer is full, this is the next best thing. First of all, you'll need very clean containers. If they've been recycled, make sure you've used cleaner steriliser to make sure they're absolutely clean. Otherwise, brand new bottles just need a quick rinse out. You can use plastic, PTFE, bottles, as well as glass bottles. Fill the bottles up to just about the shoulder. I'm then going to loosely place a cap on. Again, new cap, absolutely fine, it's already clean. Um, but if it's from a recycled wine bottle, soak it in the sterilising solution before you put it on. Loosely place them on the top of the bottle and then we're going to put them into the steriliser. When all the bottles are in, you can use your temperature probe to put it into the juice, into the middle of the bottle. That way we can be certain that it reaches the desired temperature. The temperature inside the bottle, in order to kill the bugs, must reach 75 degrees and be kept constant for 20 minutes. You can improvise using other equipment, pressure cookers, deep saucepans and things, but the principle is the same, to keep the water circulating round the bottles and bring it up to a temperature, starting to time it as soon as it reaches the set temperature of 75 degrees. Once it's reached 75 degrees and it's been there for 20 minutes, carefully take out the bottle from the hot water Apply the lid firmly and lay the bottle on its side. The hot liquid will pour into the neck of the bottle and sterilise inside that area there. Lay it on its side until it's cooled. The end product will be perfect for at least 18 months. There's been a lot to take in, but please do review the details and thank you for watching.